Hello, my name is Dr. Marina milner Bolotin, and I'm a professor at the Department of Curriculum and Pedagogy at the University of British Columbia. My field is science education, and I'm going to share with you a simple but rather surprising experiment you can do with your students. Recall how we discussed Newton's cradle, those very cool, cool pendulum that actually a set of five pendulums that you can make collide and see what happens. Those collisions, as we discussed, they're very interesting. One of the things about them that is especially interesting that those collisions are almost perfectly elastic. And what it means is that in those collisions, not only the momentum during the collision is conserved, but also the mechanical energy is almost conserved. As you can see, if I raise this pendulum, for example, for the height at the, by the height of five centimeters from the ground, the last one will go almost as high. And as we discussed, it goes almost as high because some of the energy is still converted into sound. We could hear that. But are all collisions perfectly elastic? Is it always the case? You probably know that it isn't. You have seen two cars collide, and sometimes, unfortunately, they stuck together, and they don't bounce back. So what does it tell us? It tells us that we have to have a discussion about a different type of collision, and that is called an inelastic collision. And I want to show you a demonstration that might surprise you and your students. I have two perfectly identical black balls. I'm going to drop them from the same height on the table, and I'm going to observe what happens. So think what are the possible outcomes of this collision. Now, after you have thought about it, let's try. Three, two, one, go. Huh. Maybe I didn't drop it properly. Excuse me, let's do it again. Three, two, one, go. Hmm, it looks like I did do the right thing. But one ball bounces almost as high to the same height as we released it. Not the same, it's not perfectly elastic, but almost, you can see it still bounces. The other ball doesn't. This collision is like that is called a perfectly inelastic collision when the object does not bounce but almost stuck to the other object. So they move together or not move as the result of the collision. Now you can ask, huh, how can this happen? Are those two identical? And if you do this experiment with the students, you can even feel the balls, they're not identical. But you might be curious, where did the potential energy that this ball had go? Because when I'm holding it above the table, table, it does have potential energy. But where does it go? Okay, some of it went into sound. The same way it happened here, you could hear the sound. But where did the rest go? And if you measure the temperature of this ball after the collision, the temperature of the ball increases. So what this ball can do, it can absorb this potential energy after the collision, increase its temperature so it has a different internal structure such that the potential energy it had at the beginning was converted into heat. So that's an example of an inelastic collision. And it's really important to remember that there are different types of collisions, different things can happen, and we cannot judge things by how they look. A good thing to remember, do not judge things by how they look. Do experiments and explore.